Good afternoon, Sir Brian Levison. Thank you very much for joining us uh, here on the... Sorry that I'm slightly late. That is perfectly all right. We've been having a chat, all of us, and we've been sharing information and inviting each other to online fireside concerts I and heard, all sorts heard, of things. I heard, about the, um, I heard about the fireside, and I'm not sure that that does entirely comport with the law, uh, with um, emissions. But there it is. I leave it to other... But there you go. <laughs> so it's always great to have a legal legal with us. Um, thank you very much for giving us your time and your expertise for this afternoon. Um, and you don't really need an introduction, but it's kind of my job to do it. So um, just to say to the audience, for those you really, for the odd person who maybe doesn't know who you are, we've invited you here today um, because of your prestigious career and background as former president of the Queen's Bench Division and the head of criminal justice and a long career. Um, at the bar uh, and in criminal justice particularly. So the first thing we thought we might talk about is that obviously too often people who are at risk of short custodial sentences and commit multiple minor offences have a history of social exclusion, face multiple disadvantages, including unstable housing, poverty and experience of trauma. So how does this impact, Sir Brian, on the sentencer's position and what challenges does it create for sentencers? And what do senators need to know about people's needs to be able to make the most appropriate decision with regards to the sentence? Uh, I welcome the introduction. I recognise all that you have said and agree entirely with it. Uh, there is a large number of people who um, enter the criminal justice system not because of uh, deliberate decision to commit acquisitive crime or violent crime or sexual crime, but more as a consequence of a whole range of experiences in life. And I have often spoken about the problems of dealing with people who have a veritable rainbow of uh, social and background problems to their lives. They may have come from a family which itself was disorganized, where there was no breadwinner, where alcohol, drugs, violence, crime was part of the lifestyle into which they were introduced, where they did not um, recognize the way in which they ought to behave at school, so got into trouble at school and eventually get excluded and so fall further and further behind on what are social learning skills. They then themselves uh, adopt the same sort of cycle and it's an enormous problem to seek to help those people. The criminal justice does not exist simply to lock people up. Um, I'm very, very clear about that. But equally, one's got to recognize that there are some uh, problems which whatever sentence you impose in whatever circumstances are merely going to touch the problems that the children and young people and adults have experienced the constellation of issues over the entirety of their lives. And anybody who thinks that a sentence of imprisonment is itself going to rehabilitate, I'm afraid, is living in a world which I do not recognize. Uh, the prison population, everybody knows, has grown massively. That's in part because of the um, increase of sentences. It's in part because of the, uh, the increase in uh, number of offences. It's also in part because at the end of the day, prison becomes the last resort. Wh why can't we do this better? Well, my answer is not going to surprise you. To some extent, it's because 
we have devalued the input necessary for non-custodial sentences. And I think that uh, the problem has been that sentences have truly lost confidence in what is on offer and therefore they're less willing to take risks and i think that's a great pity i have no doubt at all that the voluntary sector has an incredibly important role to play in trying to rebalance that uh, equation and try to provide some structure to non-custodial options which will regain the confidence of sentences. I think the concept of a regular review is a very good one because it engages the defendant with the court on more than one occasion. Um, I have conducted a problem solving court uh, and it's been wonderful to be able to say to somebody who won't try to keep off drugs, well, well done. And these are people who perhaps never before have had somebody in authority say, well done. But I think we've got to do a lot more to find ways of helping the most disadvantaged who demonstrate their disadvantage in many, many different ways, including by the commission of comparatively non-serious acquisitive crime, not least to fund their habit or their drinking. Um, in a, in, uh, and that's the challenge. And that's the challenge that I encourage uh, organizations like Clink to take up. And I think there's room to do more. How can sentences and voluntary sector organisations better engage with each other to provide these options so that a judge or a magistrate felt confident, I can engage with this person, I can recognise this as a slip on that climb. And I know that, you know, there are organisations around that can help them. And I know that that organisation is well placed to do so. And I can have confidence in that person going there what do you think we can do, our sector and, mm -hmm. and you and, and colleagues on, on benches around the country? The ability to offer different alternatives is tremendously important. But let's be blunt about it. You've got to, we've got to get the basics right first. We've got to make sure that such people have somewhere where they can go to bed, have some, some dignity attached to the way in which they're required to live. And these are social problems which uh, transcend the, 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 the support that voluntary organisations can give. So it requires also engagement with local authorities to try and persuade them to make sure that appropriate social housing is available, that appropriate social support is available, that gets people um into social security not living on the street all those issues that that confront the court all the time i don't know whether that fully really answers your question but communication with courts um i i, I put it to you seeking to educate um i would encourage you not to put it quite like that uh, i think i'd probably say um seeking to provide information as to what's available, what we can do, and asking what would help more to sentences. Seeking to engage with sentences as a demonstration of your willingness to be, to not only to engage and provide appropriate facilities, but also to be prepared to say, well, actually we've tried with this character and it just ain't worked. So we're very sorry. Now you've got to try something else. Um, because the great problem, I think, has been that uh, the loss of confidence is because people haven't been prepared to say that. 
and to some extent those preparing pre-sentence reports have sometimes always defaulted to a non-custodial option where actually if you look at what's what they've done the offense the non-custodial option simply is not realistic so seeing how near to the wall you can throw the penny is really quite important there's also a lot to be said for having a range of non-custodial options aren't there and a lot of the time what you'll have is there's there's one thing there's a preferred uh model and one of the things that we've been thinking about recently with community sentence treatment requirements is whether you should require therapeutic treatment of somebody who's really not able to undergo what might be incredibly difficult um you know mental health or drug or alcohol recovery treatment so kind of having a range of options available then allows the sentencer to really personalize I, I a sentence you want people to achieve don't you you don't want people to fail to meet the requirement of their and sentence getting somebody up to fail is a complete disaster really is very very counterproductive so uh the individual's got to be prepared to engage and the great problem is those who say yes yes of course i will but behind their back they've got the fingers crossed um, or they've got absolutely no intention. They just want to leave court by the same door through which they entered. Um, it's, it's a real problem, but uh, provided that the challenge is not placed at too, not pitched too high. And also I do, um, I do encourage, and I would encourage you to encourage the use or the expansion, I think it's section 178, um, that permitted reviews by the judge. Um, in lots of Crown Courts, some judges hated doing it, but there was always one judge who was really very, very good at um, providing empathy for the offender and a review every three weeks or every month or every two months. Of course, it takes time in a court just for the um, provider of the non-custodial option to report in. And it's a way of providing a check on the sensible use of your resource as well. So I think there is enormous scope to encourage the government to place more attention on review of sentences, not after a year, but after a month or after whatever period best suits the individual, all with the intention of trying to get something that works and not something that has you throwing up your hands and say, well, I did my best, try again in six months' time. The Equality Impact Statement for the Sentencing White Paper highlights that people from BAME communities may be less likely to receive diversionary opportunities because statistics highlight they are less likely to plead guilty. Um, what can be done to ensure equitable access to diversionary opportunities in the, such a case? The pragmatics of the court mean that those who plead guilty get a discount for pleading guilty. Um, therefore, you will get a lesser sentence. And, it, and I've no doubt at all that occasionally it meant the difference between a custodial and a non-custodial sentence. Um, I I, not, not frequently, but more than once I had arguments with people saying, well, I didn't do it, but I will plead guilty. And I would say, no, 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 that's not the way our system works. If you didn't do it, we must challenge it. Um, of course, when I started, there, were, there was no pace. There were none of the protections that there are now. Um, and so life was rather different. But I recognize and entirely accept that um, BAME communities are less likely to plead guilty, and that does reflect on the sentence. But um, the trouble is that you then deprive, that person deprives himself of the opportunity of explaining why, deprives himself of the opportunity of saying sorry, and deprives himself of the discount that goes to the guilty plea. And so, I, Brian, like, how much is that to do with um, 
the legal profession and it's maybe it's lack of racial and ethnic diversity what what are the drivers and what might the solutions be in terms of providing as you I loved your language there providing that person with the same opportunities for remorse for disc and for the appropriate sentence for the crime that they will maybe be found guilty of I think this is a problem um I would hope that uh, it's better now than it was, because I think the problem is slightly worse than you've identified it, and let me explain why. Uh, I think um, the diversion starts in the police station. And if um, a, a white kid from a middle class background gets into trouble. They have probably, I, I don't know statistics on this, but they've got a better chance of being cautioned than, um, than a, a black kid from a background that is different. And now that should not be. We know statistically, we have seen that less people from Bain backgrounds will plead guilty. And we often wonder in our sector, is it about the relationships until that point? So, you know, have they, has the crime been policed in a way that that person felt safe, that that person was given the opportunities to explore the options? Was it a crime? You know, with that very interesting conversations in uh, the last few years across Clinks and the Standing Committee on Youth Justice, our partners around the way in which childhood um, has been policed and we ha and, and criminalised in, in some ways. Um, and some of the things that maybe some of us would have gotten away with uh, that people won't get away with from certain communities. And certainly if it's wrong and it's criminal, then, you know, there's a, a set of penalties. But it's something I suppose we're trying to encourage our community to really get curious about how they work with people uh, and how they work with the system to help the system produce the best outcomes for, for people. Hope is a critical part of uh, the way in which we help people who are socially deprived get involved in drugs, in alcohol, and commit crime and end up in custody. Uh, I would, I mean, and I absolutely applaud any, any, anybody and everybody that does anything to alleviate the terrible challenge of that those who are sentenced to imprisonment have to go through. Um, particularly now, it must be a pretty terrible experience. Um, so uh, all I can do is support what hope do. And again, encourage, I don't know whether you do anything in a non-custodial setting, uh, uh, then make, make sentences aware of the options so that if you see somebody who has some potential in this area, encourage it and provide this, this ray of light in a life that might otherwise really suffer from an absence of light. Uh, I wish there was funding appropriate and available for all these wonderful uh, community voluntary organisations. Thank you so much, Sir Brian, for your answers uh, and for your time today. And, and for some of the, the real warmth in that, I think we all need it right now. Uh, I we're very concerned about the the mammoth task that faces our members and we're just really pleased that people have been able uh, to hear 
what you've got to say, because I think there can be a distance sometimes between the community in which you've been for so many years and ours. And I think Adam said it beautifully in the chat. Actually, people think some judges are out of touch. Clearly not. So, Brian, so Brian, our very many thanks. Uh, it's been lovely to kind of meet you. And I hope to make that really happen well, in the future. Thank you very much. Can I wish every single one of you well in your fantastic endeavours to try and improve the lot of those less fortunate in our society. Thank you all. Thank you so much. You certainly can.